Welcome to Jazz Time. Jazztime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades, authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at Jazztime.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Day Date 40 in yellow gold with a special ombre, ombre green dial. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the day date, then tell you about where this watch stands in the lineup of other similar day dates, then tell you about the case bezel dial bracelet movement, finally try it on and give you my thoughts. So let's start with the history. The first day date, which includes the day at the top, Monday through Sunday, and then the date on the three o'clock position, one through 31, was created in 1956, which makes it approximately 80 years old by, or 70 years old by now. So it's one of Rolex's longest standing collections. Rolex has many collections. The most famous is the Date Just, which they make the most of and the most variations, and it's the most popular. The second is the most prestigious of their uh, dress line, which is the Day Date, also known as the President Watch, which is what you see in front of you. And it's the latest iteration, which I'll explain to you in a little bit. And then they make many other collections like professional lines, Submariner, Sea Dollar, Deep Sea, et cetera, et cetera. Many different kinds. Now the Day Date is their most prestigious dress watch. Now you might argue that the Sky Dweller has since taken that uh, crown, but it's up for debate. The Day Date has a 70 year history. The Sky Dweller has a 15 year history. So you, you tell me. That's not to say the Sky Dollar is not a beautiful watch. It certainly is. And they make a lot of cool variations of it. But anyways, today we're talking about the day date, 40. All right, so that's a little bit about the history. Of course, it's gone through many different variations of it. Now, uh, too many to name, actually. Probably more than a thousand variations of the day, day date. Now, let's move on to the second topic, which is where does this watch stand in the lineup of other similar day dates? Now, as part of the history, the day date was not a day date 40 until mid 2000s something around 2005 when rolex decided to change the day date size from 36 to 41 it was a, a a huge change for them it marked the first time that rolex caved to the pressure of the demands that their customers had which was that of a larger watch and they made a 41 millimeter which is actually one millimeter bigger than this one they produced that for about 10 years until mid to uh, around 2015. And around that time, they decided, you know what? 41 millimeter is a little bit too large. Let's scale it back a little bit and produce it at 40 millimeters. And that's, this is the, what you get in front of you, which is the proportions that Rolex now believes, at least for the last 10 years, that this is the right proportion. And I have to agree with them. Day date 40 is better than the day date 41. The Day Date 41 just looked a little bit big and awkward. Now it looks much more streamlined and at only one millimeter smaller, it doesn't really look that different. Okay, so then they made the Day Date 40. And obviously the Day Date 40 was for men. The, the 36 could be for men with a smaller wrist or women that like to wear larger wrists. And within the Day Date 40, they'd done tons of different variations. Yellow gold, white gold, rose gold, and even in platinum, they did with dome bezel, fluted bezel, diamond bezel, baguette bezel. They done with different dials. You name it, they pretty much have done it. I'd say like, I don't know, 500 different variations or I don't, a lot of variations, hundreds of variations, special editions, um, et cetera, tons of stuff. Okay, but what you see in front of you is the latest, the latest 2024 release. It's done in green ombre, which is this green dial in the center and fades to dark black at the periphery. <clears throat> Previous to this, the only ombre dials that Rolex did were on 36 millimeters, which were released about five years ago in 2000. And they did very well, but they were 36 millimeter and people really wanted them on the 40. So Rolex obliged and produced it on a 40. And this is the result that you see. So at the moment, since this watch is a new release, it's super hot. It's impossible to get. Of course, you can buy it at jazztime.com. It is going over list as you could imagine, as many watches are, not all, but many, especially hot dials like this. And is not hard to see why. Okay, now that's enough about the where this one stands in the lineup. Uh, I, I would say it's mid-range, by the way, in, in terms of its lineup, uh, where it stands, 
because there are more expensive day dates such as platinum with baguette dial, etc. Actually, it's on the low end of day date. Uh, now I think about it in terms of what it originally cost from Rolex, which is retail around 40,000. But the thing is, it's got this super special dial that you don't get on platinum watches. They don't get, do ombre uh, dials on, on, on platinum watches. So you got this super special dial, which actually elevates it, I would say, to mid-level. It's not quite as uh, expensive and, and luxurious as a platinum. Those ones are like 100 grand. But nevertheless, it's still very special in its own right because of the dial. And I don't believe that they're going to make tons of these, this uh, ombre green beautiful dial. Okay, anyways. But you can buy it at jazzheim.com by clicking on the link in the description below, which is, by the way, why we make this video, not for our health, but for you to look at it, love it, and decide to buy it at jazzheim.com, which, by the way, is the lowest price anywhere online and will match if you find a legitimate source, not like, oh, my best friend's selling it in the garage. No, somebody who is actually a dealer who has it in stock and is in USA, th that we definitely will match. Okay, anyways, let's move on to the case. Like the case is 40 millimeters from my thumb to my index finger. I told you it used to be 41. Now it's 40. It used to be that means like 10, 15 years ago. Now that they've realized that it's a good size, 40 millimeters, actually, if you ask me for a dress watch, is absolutely perfect. 40 to 42, I would say, is actually perfect for most men. <clears throat> okay. Now, you might think that because this is one of their most complicated dress watches, that the thickness would be impacted. But in fact, it's not any thicker than a date... Uh, uh, date just. If you turn it on its side profile, it's about 12 millimeters thick, which is a normal thickness for uh, a watch. It's not too thick, not too thin. And I don't, I'm not really that big of a fan of having the watch too thin. Like if you put it at eight millimeters and feel like there's nothing on your wrist. And of course, if you put it at 14, 15 millimeters, like a deep sea or, or some other, uh, like um, a big AP, it sometimes it feels like too much. So really, Rolex, they're known for their practicality and putting their watches at 12 millimeters really makes the watch the the right thickness and the right proportion i mean the watch uh, after all needs to look proportional you know it can't be too uh, uh big diameter wise and then too thin that's going to make it look like a um a frying pan you know but at the same time it can't look too thick or else it's going to look like a hockey puck so it's got to look it's got to be proportional and i believe actually i know that rolex has made the perfect proportional watch why? Because they've been selling this watch since 1956, that's 70 years, and it's one of the all-time best sellers, and it's one of the most iconic watches of the world. So I guess you can take that and say, I think Rolex probably probably knows what they're doing, and, and I have to agree. And you probably would will as well. So the, the proportions of this is really perfect. It's eight. It's a 18 karat yellow gold. Now they make it in other other materials, but this one here is yellow gold. The the benefit of being yellow gold is that it's absolutely brilliant. It looks insanely uh, beautiful against this dial, which I'm going to get to next. Okay. And it's, oh, by the way, it's made out of monoblock middle case with a screw down case back and winding crown. So that means it can go down to, I think a hundred meters or so. I doubt anyone will really seriously be diving this at any depth, but if you so wanted, you could actually dive with a gold president on, that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Okay. Now let's move on to the bezel. Now the bezel is a fluted bezel it is the second most iconic part of rolex after the crown the crown obviously since it's the logo of the watch is the of the brand is the most iconic part but if someone were to name a iconic part of the rolex they would probably name the, the fluted bezel and it used to serve by the way a aesthetic per, uh, a functional purpose by screwing down the, the case and keeping it watertight. Now it's just purely aesthetic, but boy, what an aesthetic beauty it is. Now you can also get this bezel swapped out after market with jazz time, or you can buy a factory with diamonds uh, to make it even more luxurious. Sky is the limit on these things, but this one is fluted. Okay. And it's made of 18 karat yellow gold. Now let's go into the dial. As I just told you throughout this whole video, the dial is probably what makes this, it's not probably, it is what makes this watch so special. It's called the Green Ombre. Okay, O-M-B-R-E. Green Ombre. And what that means is the center is has this brilliant green and it radiates black as you enter the edges of the watch. So the way that they do it is they uh, apply a... They, they first apply the green, the concentric green, and then they add a black lacquer, which is basically a black paint uh, toward the edges 
and then to blend it toward the center. So you first, you add the normal green, and that's why I believe it's a little bit harder to make this and takes more work and they don't make as many because it would be much easier just to make it all, all green, which they've done before. They made day dates and all green before. And they just, uh, but to go in there and apply black lacquer, which is paint toward the edges and make it smooth and gradient such that it looks green to black, it's not a very easy thing. And you need a specialist to ensure the harmonious transition from color to darkness. And if you ask me, by the way, I believe it makes the watch look much better than flat green or flat black. Why? Because, you know, having a flat green watch is not the easiest watch to wear. That's why initially when the Rolex Hulk, which is all green, was released, it didn't do very well. And I know it didn't do well because we were selling them at jazz time back then and people actually prefer the black because the green was just too hard to match. Now, of course, that has all changed. People want the bling bling. Okay, well, fine. But I'm just saying that it's not the greatest to have the watch in all green. I mean, you know, it's hard to match, really. I mean, imagine if you're wearing a gray suit or um, let's say a pastel color, light blue. It's just not going to match, you know, so it's, it doesn't match. However, black matches everything, so does white. So to do an ombre finish to where it goes to black, you know, in certain lights, this watch could actually look kind of dark, dark as in almost black. So in that sense, it can match that gray. It can match the, the um, you know, many, many colors. So that's why I'm saying it's a, it's a perfect match. And the, the secondary market um, agrees with me because the watch is retailing way more, or sorry, retails around 40, but in the gray market, it's selling way, way above that, way bad above that. So, and I believe it will continue to do so for quite some time because of the specialty of this dial. I mean, you can make, get any other dial, actually even under list, silver, champagne, you know, why these are basic dials that they've been making for 10, 15 years, right? But this special ombre, they just started releasing it. It's only going to the best customers. And so most people, 99% of the people are forced to buy it on the secondary market, unless you have a massive spend history and Rolex. Okay. Anyways, that is the dial. Let's move on to the bracelet. The bracelet, not much to say other than it is iconic. It's the president bracelet, it's 370 circular links. It, had, it has a hidden clasp. It's pretty much always looked like this and it's not really much changed from before. It's beautiful. It's iconic. What can I say? Uh, I can only say that actually it would be nice if they figured out how to make um, extendable links somehow so that you could extend or contract the links just a little bit. But okay, anyways, now let's move on to the movement. The movement is upgraded from the previous movement, which is this one is a 3255. The old one was a 3155. You can't see it anyways. It's 70 hour power reserve. It's a very precise and there you have it. Okay, let's try this watch on my wrist. Now look, I'm six foot tall, so I have a 7.5 inch wrist and I, and I weigh 200 pounds. As you can see, the 40 millimeter data does not look big on me at all. In fact, it looks, I would say perfect. So I would recommend this people for those who actually have, let's say a 6.75 to seven inch wrist or larger. If you have, let's say seven inch wrist or larger. If you have a, a wrist that's smaller than that, probably you should go 36. It really looks fantastic. I, I'm really a huge fan of the day date. I think all, we all are, we have the day date to thank for bringing up the watch market in general, because it's such an iconic watch. Presidents have worn it. Uh, many people have worn it. It's a, just a massively incredible watch and it holds the value incredibly well okay so look if you want to buy it go to jazztime.com if you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video you can just click below on show more to see the full description then you can check the link next to model as seen in video click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details if you're watching on the mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com, you always get a steep discount. So you should check the prices with us. 
If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazz time, plus the brand, model, and the details you're interested in, and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.